Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Make, make it. it! Today, Devin and Orion are going to show you how to make a really cool arrow, just like Katniss uses in Hunger Games. But just Devin's gonna show you guys how, not me. <laughs> Devin's gonna do most of the showing. Orion's offering moral support. This is Devin's blacksmithing forge and his workshop. This is where he does his blacksmithing. What are these pipes for? Chimney pipe for my house eventually. Are we gonna stay here? Yeah, for a little bit. Okay, so first things you're gonna need, obviously you're gonna need a, a stick or an arrow shaft. You could use a uh, stick you get from outside or if I were you, I'd use a dowel rod from a hardware store. Um, if you're gonna use a stick, you're not gonna wanna use a dead one because it will break. You're going to want to cut one off a tree. Um, you're going to want to wait about three or four days for it to dry because it will shrink slightly and the arrow, uh, the arrow head will fall out. Okay, so step number one, either buy a dowel from the hardware store or pick a branch off a tree, let it dry for three or four days. Got it. Now, you're going to want to, you could just hold this with your hand, but I'm using a vise because it's just easier because then I got another hand to do stuff with. All right, so you got it in your vise or you're just holding it. Next thing you're gonna need is some kind of saw for the point you're gonna be using. So, there's a, a seemingly infinite amount of different materials you can use. I have another one out of bone. You can use steel, you can use flint or glass. A lot of people make them out of glass. Where can somebody find? Online, or you can just make one. You could look up how to make arrowheads on YouTube. Okay, cool. So we're just going to I'm just gonna take the saw and you wanna make sure it's in the middle. And you wanna support it so it doesn't uh, break when you pull this back. The first few cuts are kinda of difficult usually. But once you start to get a deeper groove, you can go back and forth. So you wanna get that and make sure it not fits it all right. Yeah, so that's gonna be good. I'm gonna bring this through a little bit more just to open up the hole a little bit better. Alright, that's pretty good. So now that should fit in there pretty nicely. So step number two, you want to make a notch in the top like Devin showed you. And then you fit your arrowhead. So how would somebody go about cutting this into an arrowhead shape? Uh, well, you mean the copper? Yeah. Into the arrowhead? Uh, I just use this. I used okay. this saw, saw, which a lot of people now hacksaw, and I used hacksaw, okay. a file. Um, it's, it was pretty easy. You can also buy these really cheaply online. You can buy arrowheads, okay? Pretty easily, yeah. So if you don't feel like if you don't feel like making your own arrowhead, you can buy them. Um, so that fits in there pretty well. And now, just so that it's more oops, aerodynamic, I'm going to be using a rasp, which is like a file with really big teeth on it, to kind of make this a little bit more aerodynamic so that it flies better and goes into whatever I'm shooting better. A little duck has joined us. <laughs> so that should lose my point in here. Fit in pretty well. Okay, that's perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Okay, so that, that part's good. That's done. So we also didn't really cover before that when you want to get a, if you're going to go with like getting a stick, you're going to want to take all the bark off once you get it and then let it dry like that. And another thing about it uh, is you're going to want it uh, to be about as long if you take it and pull it to your, to the edge of your lip. Uh, if you have your arm fully extended, you want it to extend like three inches or so off like that. Okay, so, so yeah. step, uh, that would be... Step something. Step something, that kind of comes before. Yeah. Uh, uh, this, that's like step zero before yeah. one. So you got to pick out your, your dowel, and when you measure the dowel, Devin just showed you how to measure it. And if you do happen to get a stick, it's challenging to find one really straight though, isn't it? I, this, yeah, I had to bend this over uh, the stove when it was on. It's, difficult. There's a lot of tutorials on how to do that online too. Okay, so in order to straighten out a stick that you've uh, taken from a tree, there's some tutorials on YouTube about how to straighten the stick. It was a process that Devin, he, he likes it to be the most primitive and authentic types of weaponry, so he makes everything from scratch. But 
You certainly don't have to. You can go buy a straight dowel, but if you're more adventurous and you want to try something really cool, you can learn how to straighten out a stick with fire. So, so once that fits in there, then you're done with that part. And once it's pretty, like you want the end of this, the end of the shaft to kind of go to somewhat of a point. Um, so now that that's done, we can work on the knock on the other side of it. So we're gonna put that down in there. We're gonna tighten this up. And again, you could just hold this if you don't have one of these. Chances are you don't. Um, you could use also like a um, like uh, like a clamp. Like if you have one of these, if you want to clamp it to your table and do it like that, that would work too. All right. So man, it's cold today. Okay. So this is going to be a little bit thicker because you're going to want, um, this, this is where the string goes into on your bow. So you can start with a file and just go like this to kind of get a little groove in there. It's going to be difficult to stir right now. All right, that's more seeable right now. There's a little groove in there. And then I'm going to take this larger file and you could just do it with this file, but since I have different ones, I'm using different ones. All right, so you're just going to go in. So you're gonna to want to get use this to get down to the depth that you want. That's probably gonna take a while. Um, it's gonna be noisy probably as well. So because it's really cold outside today, we've moved inside to do, to do the rest of the arrow. So this is a this is an, another arrow that I've made, which is pretty much gonna be what our final arrow is going to look like. Um, this is what we have so far on the arrow. We have this knock here. What is it called? Then? A knock? A knock, yeah, like. Okay. <laughs> and then this is where the uh, point's gonna be. Where is the point? I lost it again. Somewhere. In here. Right here. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so that's gonna go in there. But that's gonna be a little bit later. We're gonna do the fletchings first, which is this part right here. Ooh, Devin knows that feathers kind of freak me out. Mm -hmm. They're kind Especially of. Especially this part you're gonna hate. So. We have a bunch of feathers right here that are all, these are all turkey feathers, and we're gonna have to get, we're gonna have to find the ones that have the bait, like, that are the widest. So this one's a good one. We're gonna need about three of these. This one's good. Hey, we just got a cutting board because uh, we'll mess up the table if we do this, so do that. Um, so you're gonna wanna get that down through there. And then you're just gonna take it like this, and you want the blade to be facing away from you. So now we need to use a knife. Um, make sure you ask your parents first, uh, or parent, because knives are dangerous and this could be dangerous too. So what you're gonna wanna do is, uh, if you look, with turkey feathers anyways, you, there's a bit of a, a groove here. Uh, and you're gonna wanna put the knife in there and push it down in. You give it a little twist to kinda open everything up a little bit. And then you're gonna wanna push down on the knife and pull on the feather, just like this. Sometimes it kind of splits off and you have to go back into the middle like that. Oh. And keep pulling on it. Just like that, and separating those two halves of the feather, like that. So now the feather's split in half and you can just take it and break the rest of that down. So now that you have these two halves, can start uh, putting them on. You're gonna need, I could just use these. Um, so now we're gonna get some, you could just use scissors, but I have these really heavy duty uh, ones. So we're gonna take this feather, this one's good. We're just gonna cut it here and here. Now when you cut these, they like to kind of shoot off. That one didn't, but sometimes they go flying. So we're gonna cut this bit here. Get that all good. And get these all straightened out. So these two are pretty good. Uh, all right, those are pretty good ones right there. And then we need one more, which we'll just get from right here. And you want to make sure these are all the same length. So you're gonna want to kind of measure them like that and cut them accordingly. There you go. So three is usually good. Some people do two, some people do four, but I think three is good. So there you go, those are your three. Uh, and then you're going to want to, you're gonna be tying these on. So you want something, to, you want an area where you can wrap this string around. So I 
go like this and just cut like the first quarter or so inch off. So that's where I'll wrap some of the string around. And then I'll also do the same thing on the back. There you go. And that makes it look weird. Oh, I see what you mean. Triangle. So there's like... Yeah. Something to wrap the string around. Okay. And I'm just going to do that to these ones as well. All right, so those are our fletchings all set up. Next, we are moving on to attaching the fletchings onto the shaft. So you're going to need a few things. You're going to need some kind of string. This is artificial sinew, like tendon of deer. And you're going to want to, um, you can just take whatever. You could use yarn if you had to. You could use twine. That's good, too. But you don't want it to be too thick. Uh, so you're going to want to just cut that. You don't need it to be very long. This is too, this is a lot longer than I need, but I'm just using it for demonstrational purposes. And now you're going to want to take two of these, but because I have this special stuff, I can split it like Where this. would somebody get that? I got this online. Um, also, you're going to need some kind of glue. I'm using a two-part epoxy. The best thing to use. Um, so you're gonna want, this is two, there's two parts to this, so you wanna add in the same amount of each. So you can see that, and then this will last, this is good for five minutes. So you gotta be a little quick, but you know, you can do this pretty quickly. So you wanna mix it up, and it kinda turns a white, uh, kinda cloudy color. It's kinda hard to see it in this, but. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this is the side of the knock, which is the part that the string goes into, and we're going to take that and we're going to rub the glue on uh, about as much as the, a little bit longer uh, area that the fletchings are on. And we're going to take one, and you want to make sure they go on like this. If like it looks like an arrow, like the, uh, the feather fibers go backwards, kind of, as you can see, mm -hmm. um, you want that to be like this. So it goes like an arrow. So the sinew now, and we're going to actually tie a slip knot in it real quick. Or you could just tie a regular knot, but I'm gonna do a slip knot. We're gonna take the second one and put it on the same way. Ooh. So there's the first one and the second one here. And you just want to get this. You want to pull the string pretty tightly because you really don't want these to be moving around. So around the top part of the feathers that you kind of notched out, are you left? Yeah. You're wrapping the sinew around that part. Yeah. I see. Okay. And then, whoop, this is the part you really get glue on your hands. And then get the third one on here. I'm just gonna wrap it a few times. You got, and you want to pull this pretty strong so that it doesn't come undone. All right. And then we're just gonna. Um, tie a knot like this. So we're gonna take that and cut it. And I, I usually just like to take a little bit of the glue and put it on the knot so it doesn't come undone. Alrighty, so now I'm just gonna make another slip knot real quick. So once you get these all good, you just want to pull tightly and wrap them. Okay, so you're like wrapping the whole like bottom portion? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You want to get it really good so that these don't come off. So they're not fun to replace. And then I just do a knot. And you're done. I'll probably put on some more glue in a little bit, but yeah. So those are the fletchings done. So you got to get, uh, um, dep it depends on what you're using, but if you're using this, you got to get more glue because it's already uh, dried by now. It's kind of like slow uh, drying super glue. I'm really glad you're doing this for our Make It series. Make It. Make It. Make So if you look here, we're going to take the point now, take some of the glue and put it on the bottom of the point where it goes into the, the end of the shaft. And then we're just gonna put it in there. And you wanna make sure it's all um, straight, which it is. And then you're gonna take the glue. I usually use a lot of glue. So then, once the glue is on there, 
We're gonna tie another slip knot. So once you get the arrow point on the string on, you wanna wrap it around those parts. Oh, okay, is that why they're there? Yeah. I never knew that. Yep, and then and you wanna get this really tight. Why do you think using like a bow and arrow is better than a gun? I think it's just more fair. Bows and arrows are natural. And it, I just think it's just a lot more fair than a gun. Cause even a gun is just ridiculously powerful. I don't like them for hunting. I think it just makes you a lot more connected with the earth to using a bow. You could use natural glues if you're really into making this super primitive. But that's, you know, I mean, it's difficult to acquire those glues and make them. Devin's made so. homemade glue by uh, boiling rawhide bones, rawhide dog bones. And by, uh, like, forcing the oils out of birch bark and using spruce roots and uh, using pine set. There's a bunch of different ways to do it that I've done. So there you go. Well, that's pretty much done. Nice. I, I'm going to paint it at some point. Like so, this one is painted, you can see, on the shaft. Oh yeah. But that's not necessary, that's just nice looking. It just looks cooler. Mm -hmm. So that one's done. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for showing our viewers how to make a cool arrow. Maybe someday you can show them how to make a bow. Maybe. That's a little more advanced. <laughs> okay. I know, I mean. Well, thank you for watching this episode of Mega! A like, comment, subscribe, because it helps us out a lot. You'll see more videos like this in the future. Uh, we thank you for supporting us, and happy hunting.